thank you uh, for joining us. Hopefully you'll be able to view our, our full heart vascular and thoracic institute presentation on peripheral arterial disease. Uh, today I have two of our distinguished members of our cardiovascular section, Dr. Fendrakova and Dr. Uma. I asked them a couple questions regarding peripheral arterial disease. So maybe we'll begin with you, Dr. Uma. Uh, patients want to know who is high risk? Am I high risk for peripheral arterial disease? So how would you describe that to them? Yeah, so when I see my patients, uh, usually in the clinic, uh, you know, the most common uh, risk factors that I talk that I talk to my patients about and is uh, diabetes. And I usually, you know, tell them that diabetes is uh, probably the highest risk for, for peripheral arterial disease. Uh, maybe three times uh, higher risk than other uh, risk factors combined and followed by smoking. Uh, so uh, I, I emphasize those two risk factors and obviously um, high cholesterol levels as well as uh, uh, hypertension and other non-traditional risk factors uh, that includes also family history as well as uh, obesity. And so I, I focus mostly on, on uh, risk factors that are easily uh, modifiable and the patient is comfortable, uh, you know, changing uh, those lifestyle in exactly. order to improve their uh, disease. I think that's mm -hmm. great. Diabetes, smoking, mm -hmm. a person that has disease, atherosclerotic disease, heart mm -hmm. attack or a previous stroke, obviously yes. mm -hmm. at risk. Mm -hmm. Those are important features for mm -hmm. family members and patients to to remember. Yes. So Dr. Frenchakova, you gave a great presentation on the identification of peripheral arterial disease. So what should a patient look for in terms of symptoms they might experience? So it is very important for the patients and especially patients who have cardiovascular risk factors. Those are the patients with diabetes, who smoke, who have high blood pressure, um, who have high cholesterol levels to recognize the symptoms of peripheral arterial disease. Those symptoms include leg pain and especially pain whenever the patient would walk. You know, every time that somebody would walk, the leg pain would start and would cause the person to stop walking, take a rest before able to walk again. We in medicine call this symptom claudication, and we recognize that this is one of those symptoms of the peripheral arterial disease. In more severe cases, patients may have the more severe symptoms of pain at rest, as well as the non-healing wound on the, on the leg. So if a person has those cardiovascular risk factors that we discussed, it is very important to recognize the symptoms and seek evaluation. You should come to your doctor and ask, is it possible that I have the disease of my arteries? And then your physician will proceed with evaluation. This evaluation ultimately need to include evaluation of the pulses, and uh, we in vascular clinics are well aware that the exam of the patient is not complete without the patient taking off the shoes and us putting our hands on the pulses of the legs to evaluate for potential disease. And also there are very easy diagnostic tests available to make this diagnosis. One of those basic tests in, uh, is called ankle brachial index. And this is essentially a blood pressure cuffs placed on the legs and the arms and measuring and comparing the pressures. It is painless test, very easy to use, and it's wi widely available. We have the very capable vascular lab that exists in 15 locations throughout the greater Cleveland area. Uh, which is ready to help uh, the patients whenever this, uh, there is a need. I think that's so important to underscore that it's easily identifiable if we do the appropriate testing, which is a very simple blood pressure cuff essentially around the ankle, painless, 
a simple, quick, easy way to identify. And it's not only to identify peripheral arterial disease for procedures, but once we identify peripheral arterial disease, then we can institute the appropriate medical therapy to reduce the chances of that disease progressing, to reduce heart attacks, to reduce strokes. We're not identifying it just to do procedures. So that's really important. And I liked your discussion this morning about uh, best medical therapy. So maybe you can speak to the issue of cholesterol medication. Sometimes I see as a vascular surgeon patients that are hesitant to start a cholesterol, even though they understand they have peripheral arterial disease. Yeah, so uh, in the medical therapy for uh, uh, peripheral arterial disease, uh, we get insights and guidelines that change to better manage the disease. Uh, so, you know, the most current guidelines uh, state that you, you usually don't really depend on the number uh, of, the, uh, of the LDL, uh, which is the bad cholesterol. Uh, so, so long as uh, we identify the risk factors, uh, including diabetes, uh, uh, smoking, uh, previous heart attack, really the numbers don't really come into play. We just treat uh, with cholesterol uh, pills. Uh, and uh, so far, you know, the, the current guideline uh, mandates that uh, we start with a higher dose, which is called the high uh, intensity starting therapy. Uh, in the past, uh, we, we usually, we, we really relied on the numbers. And uh, those, uh, you know, those days actually, you know, the outcomes were not as uh, great uh, because, you know, we are really treating the numbers, not the risk. Uh, so, so far now, nowadays, we, we, we just put the patient on a, a high statin therapy regimen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So re really important. Cholesterol statin therapy is, is critical to this process and risk pool cohorts suggest that patients that are diabetic, smokers, if you have these multiple high risk factors, even if your cholesterol numerically is not elevated, one may benefit, the patient may benefit from being on a statin therapy and there are multiple options. And for patients that are told they're intolerant or have some history of intolerance, these are the experts along with their cardiology colleagues in getting you on the appropriate medication because there are many options. So Dr. Frenjakova, you, you have these patients that have an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. How do you monitor your peripheral arterial disease patient over time? Well, the, it really depends on the, um, the presentation of the patient and also if the patient had any interventions. So um, initial assessment, as we discussed, is the ankle brachial index test. And then um, we sometimes use the, um, the test, repeat this test after the exercise to evaluate what is the limitation of the uh, patient to walk? What is the functional capacity of the patient? This test can be repeated in time, and we have the certain numbers to look for. So if uh, the number is declining between one test and another test, this may indicate the progression of the disease. In those patients who are involved in the best medical therapy, it is important to realize that it's not only the numbers, and in fact, the numbers um, may not indicate clinical improvement. So it is very important to interpret the results of those tests in the context of the actual reality. And also, we always on the standby to help our interventional colleagues in uh, vascular surgery, interventional cardiology, to help assess the patients after the intervention. We have the readily available tests, including ultrasound, including more sophisticated tests to help assess uh, the progress of the patients and a response to the therapy. So that, that's important. We're, we consider it married to the patient with peripheral arterial disease. Once it's diagnosed, the patient's followed over their lifetime for progression of that process by one of our vascular medical experts, one of our cardiologists, maybe one of our vascular surgeons. And it's additionally important, these folks are experts with 
the non-surgical management, which frequently and should include supervised exercise therapy or some structured exercise program. A walking program will potentially improve your peripheral arterial disease. So thank you for tuning in uh, with us today. Hopefully these questions and answers from our experts were helpful to you and join us again in the future.